I'm doing this video because I've been very blessed to have the opportunity to restore some 16th century glass beads. I know this isn't my normal fare on my YouTube channel, but I figured if I did a good job making a, a video that most on my channel would find it very interesting. So I'm going to film little sections. I can't film the whole process because it's probably going to take a minimum of 10 hours, maybe longer, maybe less. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you the beads first. Okay, hopefully this time I'll have the bead in the, the image, the, the video. Anyway, these beads This particular style, I haven't seen hardly any of them. I know that Billy Steinberg gave me permission to go ahead and clean these up and do my best to restore them. I'm going to have to be extremely careful with how I do it. I can't use just your standard machines because the beads are very irregular. Oops. Very irregular, they're lumpy, they got high spots, they have low spots. So starting out, I will probably just use semi-worn out 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper. I'll go ahead and sh show a little bit of me working on it, but it, it's going to be a long process. You know, I'm going to just make little snippets as I go along to give you a chance to see what steps I've gone through to, to get these up to what I'm hoping is a crystal clear glass again. Okay, I'm going to show you a little trick I learned many, many years ago. When you have a piece that's got a lot of scratches on it and a sharpie won't hurt it, you can just cover the areas with, with sharpie. I'm just going to cover a little area. But if you cover the whole piece with Sharpie, as you're sanding it, that Sharpie is going to stay in those lower lines. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing fully covered and then I'll, I'll start sanding it. Okay, as you can see, I've totally covered that bead with Sharpie. Looks like a black bead. Now there's a spot right there that's as made super shiny. Any of the low spots will drastically show up now. And for those that are wondering what happens if Sharpie's left on it, you just put it in acetone. Acetone won't hurt this glass at all. And that, that any leftovers would just float right off of this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up to try to show you, or not try to, to show you my first processes. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is a very worn out diamond file flat that's 600 mesh and what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and spray some water on it and some on the bead and then I'm just going to lightly work on this surface not standing in any one spot 
And you can already see that it's cleaning the black off. And you can also see there's spots where there's still black there. There are spots on this bead that were very, very rough, and that'll be the, the area that I spend the most time on, just to get rid of the scratches that were on it. Anyway, what I'm going to do is continue to do this for some hours. You know, but you can see there that there's black here, black here, black over here, but there are spots that I don't even hardly need to do any work on. So I'm going to cut here and work on this till I have it all smoothed out with some spots left, and I'll go ahead and show you that and show you what my next step's going to be. Needless to say, there's going to be a lot of handwork in this. If I'd used machines on it, I'd mess the bead up. Okay, I just spent about 45 minutes using the diamond pile flat. It, the bead right now looks really milky. And you can see the, the remaining black spots. You can, and you can also see that the bulk of the, the face of the bead has no black spots. On these sides right here, these are very low spots. So I have to use other techniques to get those smooth. There's a few little dots on the face of the bead now. I'm going to go ahead and spray it so you can see how much better it looks now. I mean, you can see all the cane in there already. Very clearly. Very clearly. Um, again, I'll say I'm super excited. You know, what I'll do next is work on those low spots and then I'll use a, a clothes pin because I use wood a lot with my diamond. I'll use a clothes pin with 600 mesh diamond and oil on it. That'll even make it smoother at 600 mesh. And I, I thought I had one laying here, but I don't. Anyway, and then I'll progressively go through numerous steps until I have it where it's glass clear again. If it ever, it probably was. Any, anyway, I'm getting pretty excited already. Going to be an absolutely gorgeous collector bead. One of the very few.